everyone welcome you all to this session in this session we will see what is virtual kubernetes cluster and what it offers myself nathan and i work as principal software engineer at ericsson predominantly into verification of machine learning operations and test automation the agenda of this session goes like this that starts with the background then the overview of virtual kubernetes cluster with a recorded demo to see how it works and finally its various use cases where it could be used let's start with the origin story the origin story is based on the challenge that we faced in our organization it may be applicable for others too as we all know in any cloud native product development team right test environment that is kubernetes cluster plays a major role in our day to day task like during study phase to do proof of concept during development phase for individual developers to test the code changes during testing phase to certify the release of the product especially in ca cd pipeline right so now let's see these challenges one by one first let's see the challenge that a team faces for a development environment um, multi tenancy is really tough with kubernetes and there are pretty much two model which the people use to share a cluster across individual teams right the one model is that there is a shared cluster for everybody with a namespace isolation so an individual team or uh, uh, sorry so an individual or a team gets their own namespace and that's what they have access to right but the challenge here would be the teams might be developing a global objects like custom resource definitions that is crds and we all know that, that they cannot manage that in a namespace isolated cluster right so the only practical solution here is used to dedicated Kubernetes clusters to guarantee true separation, which is known as cluster based isolation, where every individual or team gets a dedicated Kubernetes cluster. And, uh, and you know, even this is problematic for a lot of reason. It is an addict to the management due to the cost and the complexity associated with scaling the Kubernetes cluster as the team grows. With respect to the complexity, right, most important part is maintaining the clusters on the longer run by upgrading and performing other maintenance activities. Finally, uh, it brings in environmental impact means an individual user may not use the full capacity of the resources in the Kubernetes cluster and most of the time, right, it will be underutilized. And as we could see in the comparison, the isolation is not that great in namespace, whereas it is true in separate cluster, but at the same time, it increases the cost and brings in other complexities that we discussed, right? So, what if instead of namespace and cluster isolation, an individual team member is given a dedicated cluster without all these challenges? Now we'll answer this question in a while as we move forward in the session. The next challenge that we face is freedom of choice. Usually in a company, we'll have a central admin team who will take care or run the Kubernetes cluster and they do sort of an IT overload, you know, telling the team that no, no, we are running this version of service mesh and that's all we run in the Kubernetes cluster and this is how we set it up and everybody must obey by that and they don't want to run thousand different versions of Kubernetes cluster design, okay. So, however, we can't blame them for it, but practically their approaches are in the way of progress or flexibility for developers. Now, what if a developer is given a dedicated sandbox environment where they have more freedom of choice and still it is managed by central admin team? And we will, we will also answer this question in a while as we move forward in the session. The next challenge that we face is less, less flexibility in CACD. In a conventional CACD pipeline system under test, we may need to have a Kubernetes cluster installed with the respective version every time manually or via automation, where the setup time of Kubernetes cluster will be like 10 to 20 minutes, right? Then the system test would start, which gradually increases the overall feedback loop time of your CACD pipeline. Also, let's say we want to test a product in multiple Kubernetes versions. It is going to take a lot of time to test all these probabilities and combination because setup time of Kubernetes cluster is going to take time. 
So what if there is a flexibility to have all these covered in the CI-CD pipeline with the quick feedback loop time? Then it is more advantages for any product development team, right? And more importantly, you know, it brings in more confidence before they ship the software package to the end users, right? Just like any organization, we also faced all these challenges and this triggered a study to explore technologies that could help us to use the development and test environment efficiently using cluster virtualization technique and reduce the cost and provide more freedom of choice to the developers. While exploring, we came across an interesting open source project called <clears throat> vCluster that looks promising to address the challenges that we discussed so far. Now, the next question would be, <clears throat> what is vCluster? On a funny note, going forward, this session will be like the Inception movie. In a very simple term, virtual cluster or in short V cluster or lightweight Kubernetes cluster that runs on top of another Kubernetes cluster. Now, V cluster is an open source project. Initially, V cluster is built in a commercial product by Loft Labs. And going forward, I will be using the term V cluster in place of virtual Kubernetes cluster. More specifically, V clusters are just a control plane that runs inside another Kubernetes cluster. What is a control plane? As we know, a regular Kubernetes cluster will have an AP server. Then we have a data store like HCD, standard backend for Kubernetes where the cluster configuration and state data such as number of pods and their state are stored. Then we have a controller manager that controls the deployment, replica sets, etc. Also, we have a scheduler that actually takes the pods and assign them to the different nodes in the cluster where the container gets started. Then we have the workloads on top of this control plane. Typically, we will create a namespace to essentially run pods in them. Typically, we will have multiple namespaces, right? And that's how a regular Kubernetes cluster looks like. Uh, then for anything, we always talk to this API server, which is the gateway to the uh, Kubernetes cluster. And in a regular Kubernetes cluster, we have the capability to spin up workloads inside the namespaces. And so why not a control plane inside a namespace? And there comes the V cluster, which is designed in such a way that a control plane runs as a pod inside a namespace of the underlying Kubernetes cluster. Going forward, we'll call this underlying Kubernetes cluster as host cluster. That means we have an API server and couple of other components, which we'll talk about in a while, and which this API server will be the gateway to the virtual cluster. And so we'll not talk to the host clusters API server anymore, and we'll talk to the V clusters API server directly. So in nutshell, what they do in V cluster is that they give a way to share a host cluster, but at the same time, it gives the people an experience that feels to them like that they have their own dedicated Kubernetes cluster. I know this sounds like an overwhelming topic, and so let us experience the same with a quick start recorded demo. In the interest of time, right, so we have already uh, pre-recorded the demo. Now I'll walk through this pre-recorded demo. Now, I have already uh, connected to the host cluster and uh, uh, I have listed all the namespaces in the host cluster. Now, let's create a namespace called host namespace in the underlying host cluster, which is supposed to host our virtual cluster. Okay. Now, what about the permissions in the host cluster to run vCluster? Actually, we don't need any cluster-wide permission, only the permissions to create a stateful set and a service in this namespace is required, right? Uh, when we have that permission, right, we can create a V cluster and inside the V cluster, we'll, uh, we'll be the cluster admin now. Now, let's go ahead and create a V cluster called VC1 in the host namespace. And there are multiple ways we can uh, create a V cluster either through vCluster CLI or Helm or just a kubectl apply. I have used vCluster CLI, which is a very lightweight binary from vCluster project. And under the hood, as we see here, it executes a Helm command that pulls the chart and deploy it to the cluster. Now, now let's wait for the command to complete. Now we list the vCluster. There we go. Now we'll see what is inside this host namespace. space. 
we could see a stateful set and its associated service and pods and the pod as we see here it has two containers running in it now let's wait for this host cluster to come up sorry the v cluster to come up now as we can see the v cluster is up and running inside the host uh, namespace now let's access the v cluster and again there are multiple ways we can access the v cluster here i'll be running a simple connect command using v cluster cli uh, what it does is it does a kubectl port forward to the v cluster's api server now i'll split the terminal here the v cluster cli command creates an kube config in the current working directory as you can see here now let export it to uh, the environmental variable called kube config so that all my kubectl commands now points to the v clusters ap server and not to the host clusters ap server okay so any um, uh, kubectl that i'm going to execute now will run inside the v cluster now let's list all the namespaces inside the v cluster as we can see here it is different from what it is there in the host cluster now let's get the pod in the cube system namespace of the v cluster as we can see here there is one pod running called core dns we'll talk about this core dns in the later part of the session now we are admin in this v cluster now let's create a, a, a namespace inside the v cluster called ns1 now let's get the namespace there we go it got created now let's try to schedule some workloads inside the v cluster by creating a deployment called a sample inside the namespace ns1 with the name nginx with replicas2 let's wait un until this uh, uh, two uh, pods are up and running and there we go the pods are up and running now Uh, wait, we saw in the previous slide, V cluster had only control plane, right? Remember? Well, then where these pods are running? That's the question we'll answer in a while. And finally, as the V cluster is set up and workloads are running, let's also look how to wipe the V cluster. It can be done using a, a, a V cluster CLI or using Helm or using kubectl delete namespace if you use v cluster cli as used here it also does the helm uh, delete uh, in the back end so that's it the, the v cluster is deleted in a matter of seconds let's wait until this the host namespace also deleted as we want the v cluster delete command to delete the namespace as well right and there we go so so the host namespace is also removed right so now let's go through a few slides to understand what happened in the demo from v clusters architectural perspective now i'm going to walk through command by command that we did in the demo to show the inside perspective of v cluster okay now what did we do first we took a regular kubernetes cluster that is host cluster right then what did we do we created a namespace called host namespace on top of host cluster right then using v cluster cli we created a v cluster called vc1 inside the namespace host namespace right then uh, we also saw the components running inside the host namespace right so the v cluster has namely two components it has a stateful set that we uh, uh, call as VC1. This is the V cluster that we created, and it has an associated service, right? And this stateful set essentially creates a pod with a single replica in this case, and inside this pod is wherever V cluster really lives now. And we have two containers in. Uh, v cluster pod the first one is a control plane this is where we can pick our own supported kubernetes distributions like k3s which is the default one and other uh, distributions as listed here 
it has an api server i mean the control plane has an api server for any kind of kubectl interaction with v cluster and it has a separate controller manager then the controller manager is hooked up to a data store by default it is sql lite and it supports more than like hcd etc that means when we write something to this api server right inside the v cluster it writes into separate data store and this data store is mounted as a volume to this v cluster pod then we have a second container which is sinker and we will talk about the sinker in a while where our answer to the question where the parts are running resides then um, we connect it to the v cluster using v cluster connect command right so what is done in v cluster is that we don't talk to the api server of the underlying host cluster and run kubectl commands against it instead we spun up a control plane itself that runs as a pod inside a namespace so now we talk to this api server which is the core id of v cluster now as we connect it to the v cluster let's get rid of the underlying host cluster and just focus on the v cluster alone inside the v cluster we ran a command to create a namespace right now a namespace got created and it creates an entry in the v cluster's data store and as we already saw v cluster uses sqlite by default which is a lightweight data store and by default v cluster uses k3s api server which supports sqlite as a storage backend instead of sqlite we could also use uh, our own sql database or we could deploy a fully fledged hcd in a separate pods and naturally there are multiple ways to hook a data store uh, what did we do next we created a deployment called a sample with the image nginx with replicas 2 right it spinned a deployment and now we have another entry in the data store about this deployment now this control manager inside the control plane watches the new entry in the data store and it creates two parts it means it writes two more objects into the data store now we have four objects in v clusters data store right we have namespace deployment and two parts owned by this deployment now these these two parts are waiting to be scheduled now whose job is to schedule is the job of scheduler right to schedule these parts to the nodes but as we can see here there is no scheduler in virtual cluster right so the big difference uh, between uh, the regular kubernetes clusters control plane and v clusters control plane is that there is no scheduler instead there is something called a sinker v cluster does not use scheduler from its distributions and it only uses api server and controller manager and sinker is what really makes the v cluster really virtual at the sinker what it does is it watches the v clusters data store and copies the pods down to the underlying host namespace that talks to the host clusters api server so now the host cluster scheduler right that will schedule these pods and the networking policies admission controller etc in the host cluster will also apply to these pods but these restrictions are only to the pod level because all the higher level objects you know that the, the things that that are creating pods like deployment stateful set all these kind of things stays inside entirely uh, virtual inside the v clusters data store and they will not be synchronized down to the host cluster only the pods are synchronized and obviously we can create multiple namespaces right in v cluster and create same deployments but now how do we handle the naming conflicts since all these pods are scheduled in the underlying host cluster what sinker does is when it syncs from multiple namespaces down to single namespace in the host cluster it renames the pod and adds two suffix that is virtual namespace and virtual cluster name in which this workload is running without the namespace there would be conflict right let's say you have two parts of the same name in two virtual namespaces as here then we are mapping these parts into single namespace in the underlying host cluster and that wouldn't work right because this name would get conflict uh, uh, in the underlying namespace so the namespace in which this workload is running is suffixed also we can have multiple v cluster inside the same namespace to so to avoid conflict v cluster name is also added 
So that's what we saw in the demo. Now let's see how different Kubernetes resources are handled inside vCluster. All the higher level objects, you know, the things that are creating pods like deployment, stateful set, stays inside the control plane of the V cluster. Even the CRD stays inside the V cluster, and this is what makes the V cluster really virtual and gives the feel of running our own separate Kubernetes cluster. And these higher level Kubernetes objects, right, never reaches the AP server of the uh, host cluster. So the basic design here is to reduce the request on the host cluster. Now coming to the lower level objects, Sinker plays a key role in syncing them to the host cluster and Sinker syncs only few things, mainly the pods and other stuff that pods need to start. So the basic design here is to avoid performance degradation like workloads running inside V cluster, right, will run or should run with the same performance as workloads which are running directly on the underlying host cluster. Okay. Now, let's shift our focus to the backbone of any system that is networking and understand how it is handled in vCluster. As we saw, sync component in the vCluster syncs the pods to the underlying host cluster. Right. And so regular part to part communication works out of the box, just like a regular networking and can communicate with each other via IP based networking. Syncer also synchronizes services. It also wire them to the right parts. What it rewires is that as we saw initially, there were only one pod running inside the cube system namespace of V cluster. Right. That is core DNS. So by default, V cluster has a core DNS deployment in its cube system namespace itself. This means when a syncer synchronizes the uh, pod down to the host cluster, it updates the pod spec and points it to the V cluster DNS service instead of host clusters cluster wide DNS service. And then the name resolution works as normal, right? So cluster internal DNS just works as expected inside the V cluster. That, that also means that you cannot directly access the host services inside the V cluster, which is kind of a security that comes in built in as part of V cluster. Okay. Now, what is the meaning of nodes from V cluster perspective? In case of nodes, we need to understand the sinker swings in both direction, right? So when a sinker sinks a pod down and that pod being scheduled by, now by the host cluster scheduler to some worker node, but the, the, there could be many things can go wrong, right? Uh, we could get an image pull error or image pull back of error. And so, uh, what V cluster does is it also synchronizes the status up from the host cluster to the V cluster and part of the status is on which node this pod is running so that the users in the V cluster can monitor the pods or see whether the pods is scheduled successfully or not. And the default option in V cluster is that it shows inside the V cluster only those pods that uh, nodes that our parts are running. As you can see here, the host cluster has three worker nodes, but it shows only two worker nodes because our workloads are running only on these two nodes. And also we can see here, it doesn't show the real node details here. Actually, it shows all the fake node details, which means um, uh, the V cluster, when it copy the nodes from host cluster to V cluster, right, it renames them and obfuscates certain things. Uh, say if a user doesn't want to have the fake nodes, they want to see the real nodes, right? Still, they have option to install V cluster with certain configuration so that they can see this real node information in the V cluster itself. Now, let's see the comparison between namespace cluster and V cluster. So giving each team a cluster is going to be expensive and giving them namespace might be too restrictive. How about something in between? Maybe creating V cluster is the way to go, right? Hope you all agree uh, based on what we, saw, uh, what we saw so far with respect to V cluster. Now let's see the use cases where V cluster could be used. Lots of people uses V cluster for more ephemeral activities. One for development environment where developers will have full freedom of choice. Example, if a developer wants to run service mesh Istio, a particular version, it is completely up to him because it is going to be only scoped to 
your namespace and it is not going to impact other people and give them sort of their own little sandbox right and next v cluster could be used for installing testing applications in a cicd pipeline as we witnessed using v cluster a new kubernetes cluster can be spun up in few seconds right and we can pick and choose the kubernetes versions on the fly uh, while we spin up v cluster and this gives a lot of flexibility to test the product in multiple kubernetes versions and also it helps us to test the product that has different variants of installation like optional components or without optional components and all these probabilities and combination can be done in parallel using v cluster in the cacd pipeline itself that will save a lot of time and effort and brings in more confidence to the product development team when they ship the product to the end users right now, as a user, if you are interested to explore more on vCluster, you can refer the vCluster website and their documentation that has more details on the architecture and the hands on part. And say, if you want to raise any issues or if you would like to contribute, we, we can always do that in their GitHub page. And if you need any <clears throat> clarification, we can always post that in their <clears throat> Slack channel. So, so this is with respect to the documentation support of vCluster. And uh, that is the end of the uh, presentation. Hope you have uh, understood the basics of vCluster and how it works. Um, I thank you all for uh, uh, attending this session.